Hello my friends. The agricultural fields of the United States are not only the workplaces of thousands of migrant workers, they are also the place where the world's leading modern harvesting machines operate. And in today's video, we are going to the fields to see how the process of harvesting some of the agricultural products works with modern agricultural machines. The first place we are going to visit in this video is a rice field in southwestern Louisiana. Mid-August is the time when the harvest takes place in most of the rice fields in Louisiana. Here, billions of pounds of rice will be harvested by this modern machine. Currently, about 427,000 acres of farmland in Louisiana is used for rice production. And this is the third place on the list of the most rice producing states in the United States. According to the USDA statistics, in 2021, farmers in the United States produced about 20.3 billion pounds of rice, and 67% of the country's rice production is produced in the states of Arkansas, California, and Louisiana. Every year, up to 80% of the rice production in the United States is consumed domestically, and the remaining 20% is exported to more than 120 countries worldwide. In a 2020 consumer survey in the United States, most respondents said that rice produced in Louisiana tasted far better than rice produced in other states. After harvesting, billions of pounds of rice will be trucked to warehouses for storage before being sold on the market. Here's what's going on at a tobacco nursery in North Carolina. At this nursery, millions of tobacco seeds will be incubated for three weeks before they are transferred to the fields. After about three weeks, millions of potato plants are ready to start a new life in the fields. The process of growing millions of tobacco plants in North Carolina is quite similar to growing millions of lettuce plants in Arizona or Florida. According to statistics in 2021, the tobacco growing area in the United States is about 218,000 acres a decrease of about 200,000 acres compared to 2001. Tobacco harvesting will take place after about three months from planting. The end of July each year is the time when the tobacco harvest occurs in North Carolina. And this is also the time when about 1,800 immigrant workers flock to tobacco farms to work. These workers will cut tobacco plants and stack them together before transporting them to the warehouse. According to USDA statistics for 2021, US tobacco production is about 467 million pounds and 53% of that is produced in North Carolina. In recent years, China has always been the country with the largest tobacco production in the world with about 2.1 million tonnes, ranked second by India with about 760,000 tonnes, and the United States ranked sixth in this world list. This is what goes on at a tobacco warehouse in North Carolina. Here, these plants will be dried before being transported to the factory. In 2021, about 249 billion cigarettes were sold in the United States and the number of smokers nationwide is about 30.8 million. 
Next, we will go to a peanut farm in Texas to see how the process of harvesting thousands of tons of peanuts works. Initially, these peanut plants will be dug out of the ground and left to dry in the sun for about three days before the harvest is done. In 2021, about 280,000 acres of farmland in Texas was used to produce peanuts and this is the state with the second largest peanut growing area in the country. In first place is Georgia with about 790,000 tons. After about three days of drying in the sun, thousands of tons of peanuts will be harvested by these modern machines. The job of these machines is to separate the stem from the peanut tuber. According to statistics in 2021, US peanut production is about 6.4 billion pounds, and about 50% of that is produced in Georgia. The harvested peanuts will be transferred to the tanks of these tractors. Next, they will be transferred to the truck and transported to the processing plant. According to the National Peanut Commission, each American consumes about 7.9 pounds of peanuts each year. In addition, each year the United States exports about 1.2 billion pounds of peanut butter to other countries, mainly Canada and Mexico. This is the ongoing harvest at a Brussels sprouts farm in San Mateo, California. According to statistics in 2020, there are 2,541 Brussels sprouts farms across the country, with an area of about 9,450 acres. The acreage grown for this vegetable is quite modest compared to other popular vegetables in the United States, such as lettuce or cabbage. Basically, the harvesting of Brussels sprouts is not too difficult because the most difficult stages have been done by this modern machine. The job of this machine is to cut the Brussels sprouts and then separate the stems from the sprouts. Currently, Brussels sprouts in California account for 77% of the country's total. After harvesting, the sprouts will be transported to the factory to be washed and packed. According to a USDA report, each year in the United States, they produce an average of about 33,000 tons of Brussels sprouts, and 80% of that is processed into frozen food. The last place we will visit in this video is a carrot farm in Michigan. Unlike the California carrot harvest, most of the carrot harvesting in Michigan uses machines instead of migrant workers. Currently, the area planted to carrots in Michigan is about 7,300 acres, much less than the 67,000 acres grown in California. The annual production of carrots harvested in Michigan ranges from 24 to 26 million pounds about 8% of the national production. Hello my friends. In the past 10 years, American agriculture has constantly improved in terms of technology and farming processes to improve labor productivity as well as creating maximum profits. In today's video, we're going to go back about 10 years and go to farms in the United States to see how they harvested agricultural products at the time. The first place we are going in this video is a cotton farm in Texas and this is the cotton harvest that took place in 2011. Basically, cotton harvesting machines have not changed much in appearance 
over the past 10 years. The biggest change is the harvesting capacity of these machines. In 2011, Texas had about 7.7 million acres of farmland used to produce cotton, and by 2021, cotton acreage has dropped to just about 5.3 million acres. In 2011, the impact of the drought resulted in Texas yielding only about 5.1 million bales of cotton. Meanwhile, the state's cotton production in 2021 has increased to 7.7 .7 million bales. It can be seen that although the cultivated area has decreased a lot, the cotton yield in Texas has increased steadily over the past 10 years. This is the process of harvesting in a sugar beet field in Michigan in 2013. Today, these beet harvesting machines are still used in large fields in Michigan. However, their harvest capacity has increased by about 25% compared to 10 years ago. In 2013, Michigan had about 147,000 acres of land used for sugar beet production and a yield of 3.9 million tons. Through 2021, sugar beet acreage in Michigan is 167,000 acres and the yield is about 5.7 million tons, up by about 68% from 10 years ago. For many years now, Michigan has always been one of the states with the largest sugar beet production in the country, with about 1.2 billion pounds produced each year. This is the process of harvesting billions of grapes that took place in the Alexander Valley in 2010. Basically, harvesting in California 10 years ago was not very different from the way it is harvested today. Most of the grapes here are still picked by workers from Mexico. Perhaps the largest change is that the wages of grape harvesters have doubled from 10 years ago. Grape pickers in California typically earn about $13 an hour. In 2010, the vineyard area in California was 531,000 acres. By 2022, the area under viticulture in the state has increased by 40% to 881,000 acres, accounting for 96% of the vineyard area in the country. The next place we will visit in this video is a sugarcane farm in Louisiana, and this is the cane harvest that took place in 2013. In 2013, the cane acreage in Louisiana was around 409,000 acres and by 2021 the state's sugarcane acreage has increased to 493,000 acres. Today the sugarcane harvesters used in the United States can operate 2.3 times faster than the harvesters used 10 years ago. According to the USDA statistics in 2021 cane production in Louisiana is 16.9 million tons. Meanwhile, sugar cane production in the state in 2013 was only 13.1 million tons. Basically, in recent years, the area of sugar cane production in the United States has not increased much, but sugar cane production has always grown at 4% per year. This is due to improved sugarcane productivity and labor productivity in sugar mills. This is the 2011 onion harvest in the state of Texas. In 2011, 
the area of land used to produce onions in Texas was about 13,000 acres. And by 2022, the area under onion cultivation has increased to 17,000 acres. The main difference is the process of harvesting onions in California. In the past 10 years or so, the majority of onions in Texas have always been harvested by machines. In California, they mainly use workers from Mexico. This onion harvesting machine is currently only used on small farms. For large scale onion farms, harvesting machines with more than two times the productivity have been used. We are currently in a cucumber field in Florida, and this is the 2015 harvest. According to a USDA report, in 2015 in Florida, 17,000 acres of farmland were used to grow cucumbers. And by 2021, due to the high demand for cucumbers, the area planted of this fruit in Florida has increased to 21,000 acres. Today, the process of harvesting cucumbers on most Florida farms remains the same as it was 10 years ago. The cucumber harvesting machines haven't changed much over the years. The last place we are visiting in this video is a carrot farm in the state of California and this is the 2013 carrot harvest. Just like the cucumber farms in Florida, the technology of harvesting carrots has not changed much over the years in California. Most of the old harvesters are still in use. Along with that, thousands of migrant workers also flock to California farms to pick carrots each year. Over the past 10 years or so, California's carrot acreage hasn't changed much and it has always remained steady at 61,000 acres. Each year, California farmers harvest about 1.3 million tons of carrots, accounting for 88% of the country's carrot production.